The booster programme will begin next week across the UK. The third dose will be given at least six months after the second. The Pfizer or half a dose of Moderna are the preferred options for boosters, with care home staff and residents among the priority groups. Here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. At a carpentry class in Surrey for men who've retired, it was clear there was enthusiasm about the prospect of having a booster COVID jab. I think the whole scheme is good and I think I feel better for having my jabs. Um, so yes, I'd have it immediately. I always have a flu jab once a year, so I can't see there's going to be any problem having a, an extra booster. I would have the booster jab, as I said, but I would like to know more about it. And now it'll become a reality, with this age group among the first to get a third dose. The name of the game, the mantra, if you like, is to stay on top of things. Staying on top means taking preemptive action, according to the Vaccine Expert Committee. JCVI advises that adults who are more vulnerable to severe COVID-19 disease should be offered a booster vaccination in order to maintain a high level of protection through the next few months, so through this winter particularly. Officials today use this chart to show how effective vaccines are at preventing people with COVID from needing hospital treatment. Among those aged 65 and over, they were more than 90% effective up to nine weeks after a second dose. But they waned slightly the further away you got from that second jab. Medical regulators said it was safe to use AZ, Pfizer and Moderna as booster jabs, but the JCVI recommended Pfizer or a half dose of Moderna because they got the best immune responses, regardless of what had been given for the first two doses. Though if there were allergy problems, AZ could be used. At what point will double jabs start, COVID in one arm and flu in the other? Double jabs can start now, subject to um, the um, availability of both products and it may not always be the case that it is possible to co-administer all those two vaccines in every single patient. Sometimes it will be possible. Booster jabs are set to start next week with the NHS facing a difficult winter. Covid cases, hospital admissions and deaths are higher than this time last year, though there are vaccines now and officials said the death rate of those under 70 with COVID after two jabs is extremely small. Here in Croydon, like other hospitals, they're preparing for a very busy few months. Perfectly honestly, it feels like winter's come pretty early this year, um, and the real concern is, of course, as we move into winter proper, what the impact might be across the NHS. The message from health leaders is that the pandemic is still active and winter could well be bumpy at times. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Our political correspondent Helen Katz is at Westminster. Helen, how does the government explain the fact that it hasn't brought in mandatory mask wearing again or vaccine passports, um, given that admissions, hospital admissions are up on last year, infections are up on this time last year? Well, largely they're saying that vaccination has made the difference, that because now more than 80% of, of adults across the UK are double jabbed, that that means they can make smaller changes and those smaller changes will have a bigger impact. And at the moment, they don't believe they're at the point where they need to bring in mandatory mask wearing uh, and, and there's some of those other issues. So plan A is to largely continue with, with almost what we have now, which is the sort of uh, people voluntarily restricting their actions a bit, considering wearing face masks in, in crowded spaces or considering how many people they see or how they ventilate the house when they meet them, that sort of thing. And, and Chris Whitty, the Chief Medical Officer for England, did say that it is clear that people are still doing those things, otherwise uh, the rates would be much higher than they were now. So they seem to be uh, going with that, but then with that additional uh, extra vaccination through that booster programme, through the programme to give a dose of, of uh, the vaccine to 12 to 15 year olds, so they are relying on vaccination as the central defence, if you like, going into the autumn and the winter, plus 
testing, isolating if you test positive, and then these sorts of voluntary actions and hoping that that will, will see them through the winter with then that plan B being where you move into some sort of mandatory actions. So, for example, making it compulsory to wear face masks again in some places, bringing in those COVID passports, vaccine passports, which have been very controversial here. That is in plan B. Uh, though, interestingly, the government is encouraging those businesses which are already choosing to use them within plan A. Mm, but there may be viewers um, a little bit confused about what exactly will trigger a move to these mandatory measures if, as I said earlier, admissions are already up on last year and, uh, and, in, and infections are up as well. Yeah, and that, that is going to be the big question, I think, as we go through autumn and winter, is, is what is that point where they decide that actually it has worsened sufficiently to bring in those those wider measures. And that's been asked a few times in different places today. Labour was asking this in the Commons. There were a couple of questions asked at the press conference about that. And, and what we're getting from ministers and from the scientists is, is not a numerical threshold, but the indicator is that it's going to be a, a collection of, of different things, which will look at primarily the state of the NHS. Is the NHS coping with admissions as it is? The rate of hospitalisation and the, the case and how case numbers relate to hospitalisation. And so quite a few different bits of data that, that play in together. But no, there hasn't yet been any sense of you know is there a particular numerical threshold that you hit where they decide that then this is the point where you bring in those those wider restrictions so I think that is still very much up in the air and of course it does come with with implications for businesses for example if they have to bring these in how much notice will they get these get they will need some more legislation to go through the commons if they're going to bring in things like mandatory mask wearing again things like uh, those those covid passports so there is a lot to consider here and of course the speed at which they come in there's a bit of, of doubt over that you heard in in Vicky Young's piece there on the one hand, you've got Boris Johnson saying, well, look, these are shots in the locker. You'd want to do it gradually. On the other hand, you then got Patrick Vallance saying, well, yeah, but if things worsen, well, then you need to be able to go hard and go early. So I think there is still a degree, a lack of clarity really around at what point that would kick in and, and how swiftly extra measures could come in. Sure. OK, Helen, thanks for that. Helen Cat there. Well, Dr. Bharat Pankania is a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining Good us. Evening. And what would you say to a parent, um, uh, mother and father, who say, look, we've both been double jabbed. Um, the JCVI are telling the government that um, they don't think there's anything health wise in a 12 year old to a 15 year old getting um, any health benefit rather to them getting the vaccine. So we're not going to allow it to happen. Ah, that's a good question, and I hope many GPs and public health doctors around the country are addressing this issue. So what I would say is the Joint Committee on Vaccines and Immunization looked at a very narrow brief, which was of benefit or otherwise to the child, and their pronouncement was it is marginally beneficial. And then our chief medical officers looked at the totality, the bigger picture, and the bigger picture being continuity of schools, uh, avoidance of potential long COVID, um, avoidance of the disruption to education and suppression of infections in the community, in the family. And when we put that bigger picture together, the pendulum swings greatly in favor of immunization. And immunization will protect against the one big thing we're all worried about is long COVID. We don't know the consequences of long COVID and therefore the best strategy is protect yourself with the vaccine. Mm. I mean, going on to uh, the government's announcement today of its sort of um, uh, autumn and winter strategy, does it make sense given that we are at a worse situation in terms of admissions and infection rates now than we were last year, not to have, I don't know, for instance, mandatory mask wearing? It makes no sense. And I would go along with what Sir Patrick Valence was saying, that as a infectious disease expert, my advice to the government would be similar, which is you need to come in early, you need to come in hard, you need to come in extensive. We have a pattern here of always acting late, late, late. And this is the reason why the UK has unfortunately had a lot of cases which we've never caught up with properly. So if we really wanted to manage this properly and early, it is better to feel the pain today, go in hard and fast as soon as possible. That is the way to suppress infections and keep them down. 
The government's response to that is we have got a brilliant vaccination program that has got out there. It has suppressed the virus to a degree, in particularly in people who are, uh, 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 are mainly vulnerable. Um, and that's the difference between now and a year ago. That is true. And what the vaccines have achieved is that it has prevented people from uh, severe illness and dying. Nevertheless, we are seeing people admitted to hospital, mostly unimmunized. And we've also got the winter season. The seasonal influenza will be upon us. So really, the best strategy would be right now to say, look, in crowded places, buses, tubes, shopping centers, etc., please wear your masks. We need to suppress and keep it suppressed, these infections, meaning COVID as well as seasonal influenza. Okay, Dr. Pankania, it's good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bharat Pankania there.